think I'm ready. In fact, I'm sure I'm ready. As you can see, my rim... No, my tyre is off my rim, he says. Hang on a second. We now have nanny wear on brightness. Not only do I have nanny wear on volume, my tablet's upgraded to nougat, and I now have nanny wear on my brightness level. Can you believe that? Fucking, what is the world coming to? He says dropping his tablet again. That's what I love about this. By the way, I've lost my head mount, so you're now on my shoulder like a parrot. Not that you can see it. Mm, maybe, I don't know. Who's a pretty boy? He says. Yes, I'm taking the piss out of you. Right, there we go. So I love about this. It allows me to see what's going on. Okay, right, here we go. <coughs> what I have to do is concentrate on down there and not concentrate on here. So, as you can see, I have new tyres on my rims. Because I'm putting some new tyres on. I'm also in the process of refurbishing them. You see, this is how an somebody with ADHD works. You see, we start something and then get distracted and go and do something else because something else is more shiny. The truth be told, I'm waiting for so much to pass. So I had to do this for two reasons. One, I wanted to see the arrows. I don't know if you can see that. I couldn't see the arrows. I need to see the arrows to put my tire on. And two, they do need refurbishing because they're, they're yeah. But I've got to wait for some more bits to come to help refurbishing it. Anyway, in the meantime, I still need to use my bike. So and because I forgot to do a video of taking the tyres off the rim I can do another one but before we go any further we're actually going to fit these these are angled metal valve stem whatever you want to call them trader valves they are trader valves but before we go any further hit that subscribe button don't forget to turn on your notifications and give it a thumbs up if you like it and I'll be interested to hear your comments down below particularly about these because I'm going for the metal angled version as opposed to the rubber which is what you'd get if you went to a tyre place they'd fit rubber ones so this is the angled version now before we go any further there's a few things we need obviously we need two of these one for the front, one for the rear so we've got two we also this is scratching my head with my hand line from the camera we need some tools we need a valve core tool and it needs to be this type there's a reason for that which we'll come to in a minute we need some bearing fit and stud lock. Now the blue stuff that I've got is only for a medium fit. Because this is going on the tyres and because the actual nut fits on the inside, as you can see, so that goes up from there, the nut will fit on the inside. I've gone for the stud and bearing one. This is uh, heavy duty and for heavy vibrations because obviously this goes inside the engine. <coughs> So you need some of that because the last thing you want is this to actually unscrew, which it will do, or just unscrew. And then what will happen is the pressure will start leaking and then zip, and you'll lose all your air. And you don't want that. Not while you're riding because obviously you can't get it once it's inside. We need, for this particular one, it's a 14mm. So we've got a 14mm socket, a pair of scissors, a cup of coffee, and a glass of water. Cheers. That's good water. So, First thing we're going to do, he says, hoping it will stay, stay, right. <coughs> Get your core valve, tool, remove off thing. He said you can move. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to sit down there. So. The first thing we're going to do is remove the inner core from the valve. There you go. Turn that out put it somewhere safe and we'll need that later. Now what you'll find is on these you've got varying different bits. Okay, now strange enough this screws into here like so. It's meant to actually clean the thread out. Ta -da! Now the beautiful thing that that is it means you'll be able to hold it while you're actually screwing it in. So get the tire, tire, rim, what we're talking about. Obviously, 
work out which way round you want your valve facing. Now I know this is my right hand side's this side, my left hand side is this side. Um, my rear wheel, because I've got a single sided swinging arm, I want the valve facing to this side, uh, to the right hand side. <coughs> so I'm going to do the front the same, so that all I have to do is walk down the side of the bike, not around the bike. Now obviously, if you can see this, but here is the end of the core tool, which means I can see that, and I can see that's perfectly in line as to where I want it. So what we're going to do is, get our thread rocker, stay, little. get our scissors, and cut the end off. So, you know, you can actually see there that they're, they're tapered. <laughs> so you can have varying different thickness of hole. So I've gone for the smallest one. Don't need the scissors anymore, get rid of the scissors. Right, now, first thing we're going to do is apply some of this to the thread. Nice liberal coating. Like so. And obviously, fit it inside the wheel, like so, making sure it's pointing in the direction I want. Put our little nut on, like so. Get our socket. And our ratchet. And then just tighten it up. And obviously you can hold this to stop it rotating. So you apply some counter pressure. Because you don't want it slipping. And then that hopefully should be enough. And one more. So look, there we go and she's not going to move anywhere. Okay, now, once we've done that, get a clean mag and wipe around. Put your core valve back in, like so. Oh God, screw that back in. Well we've done doing the rear wheel now. Or the rear yeah, rear wheel. What I did forget there was make sure that this area in here is nice and clean. Now I've had to knock some corrosion off because there was some corrosion in here. Um, as you noticed I've also been dealing with use. Uh, rims as well. Because I'm gonna put some new tires on, which I think I've already told you anyway. But anyway, right so um, it's the same process again. So Make sure your wheels are right around. This is, as I say, it's a single sided swinging arm. So I want it the side that is opposite the swinging arm. So it's pointing out. So it's just a case of removing one's valve in the valve. Next door. Remember, put it somewhere safe. Don't lose it. Screw in your little tool. Next door. And then. We need some thread sealant. Um, liberal coating of thread sealant around. And around and around and around and around. Okay. This is where you need 60 million pounds because I put the wrong thing back on the what's then? Okay, 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 okay. okay. Right. Take a socket off there, because we'll need that. And then we put it in, like so. Make sure we're pointing the right way. Okay, you don't see so much of the uh, 
cool, you could do. Oh, by the way, you should remember to get this the right way around. So the long bit, can you see how the difference is? So the long bit goes downwards, so the nut sticks up. And then, now we're happy, we're in line. Hand tight first. Always do it hand tight, boy. Never, ever, ever do a nut up. With a ratchet before you start. Counter pressure, tighten it up. When it starts to move, you can just use this tool to pull it down. So just, just using my finger, pull it down. I think that might be enough. Looking at that. Take off this tool again. This is dropping it. Move inside. Pull it back in. There we go. Just cap back on. And then what we do. Is we put them somewhere roughly level, side by side, with the valves pointing upwards, which is possible. So, ah, come here. I might need you. This one wants to run away. There we go. And this is where our glass of water comes in. So what we're going to do, can you see that's got a recess in it? So we're just going to tip some water to make sure we've got water in our recess. There we are. And then the same on this one. There we go. Put some water in there. Put the water in there. And there's water in there. And then what we do, without disturbing the water, Walk around the edge, like the same. And then, you leave it for a few minutes, and then come back to it later on, and have a look, and see if any of the water has leaked through. So if any of the water leaks through to the underside, and disappears out there, I mean, that's not a airtight seal, and you need to redo it. So, he says, look how red my arms are. We shall come back to this in a second or two. Well, it'll be a second for you because the power of video editing. I've left the water in here for a while and using this, so you can see, because it's very difficult to see otherwise, you can see that the water is still at the top, which means none of it's leaked out. So it's a good sign that that, and the same here, is watertight, okay? Even that's watertight because there's no water gone down there. Don't think I'll put any down that one. Right, now the next test is it's still dry there because that's obviously got some bits around it which I'll need to wipe off later. So that's still dry around there. There's no water around there. And we'll check this one out. And we get there. And there's no water around there. Yes, my walls are disgusting, which is why I need to refurbish them. Which I'll be doing another time. So that is, I'm happy with that. So I'm now going to put some tyres on. Unfortunately, you won't see that because I forgot to actually video myself taking the rim tyres off. But because I've got to refurbish um, the rims, I will do it again so that you can see. Anyway, love to hear your comments down below. Give it a thumbs up and I'll let you know how these go on over the period of time that they're on the bike for. Thank you very much. Arrivederci.